presented by MMA Signatures, featuring weekly special guests, ass-kicking interviews, fight results, and much, much more. Here are your hosts, Eric Kowal of MyMMANews.com and AJ Hiller of MMASignaturesUSA.com. Genesis Radio Studios. We've got our co-host AJ Hiller here, and tonight we have a very special guest fighting this weekend at King of the Cage. Recently at Maverick MMA Three, picked up a victory there. We've got Tommy Espinoza in studio. How are you doing tonight, Tommy? What's up, guys? Uh, I'm great, actually. Thank you for asking. All right. So before we before we get into uh, talking about your your recent fight and your upcoming fight, uh, we're just gonna dive into uh, thanking our sponsors real quickly. We've got uh, Yulo Chiropractic, uh, 856-269-4567, and dryulo.com. Uh, check him out. Uh, if you're in the South Jersey area, you can go there and get your, your spine adjusted. Also, uh, pull, pull No Punches Apparel. Uh, Mark Westfall, he's got a, a great business there uh, offering some clothing. He's actually looking for a, a new uh, a venue for an MMA event or a boxing event to, to sell his gear at. So, you might yes, have to wind up with you. Absolutely, yeah, um, absolutely. Who, who else? Uh, we, got? we got Forza Sports. Forza Sports operates out of a fit, one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars square foot facility in Penn Argel, Pennsylvania. Go to their website, uh, ForzaSports.com, and use the coupon code MMA News to receive ten percent off. We also have Juiced, healthy alternative to eating. They're located at five sixty four Main Street in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, Campbell's Tree Service, three generations of tree service landscaping, excavating. They do it all, and they give free estimates. Give them a call, 570-595-2190. Ask for Andy. And, of course, we have the special uh, combo hitter. Yeah, we need we need people to start sending in those videos. It's uh, What we're doing is out with the old, in with the new. Uh, do a video where you're getting rid of your, your old punching bag. Uh, you don't actually have to throw it out, but just do a quick, funny little video. Send it to us. And uh, be like Urban Jen from USKA, who, who won one. Their, their video on YouTube has over 3,000 hits. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's a great, great uh, tool right there, the combo hitter. And since we're speaking of uh, Urban Jen, if you guys are watching, we want to thank you. Uh, you guys put on a great card this weekend, Econo Lodge uh, in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, there was, what, like 13 fights or something like that. Um, I think there were three or four pro fights. Very good card. The main event... Amazing. It was Rami, great... Rami's, uh, his family walking around with his belts. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. It had like the guy's. Yeah, a little army. It was yeah, amazing. Like 100, it was 100 amazing. championship belts, that guy, or something like that. I thought I'm it was exaggerating, but, yeah. but that's what it felt like. I mean, it was a, it was a great experience. And uh, the guy he fought, Nelson, great fight. I mean, that awesome. guy came in, he flew in from Portugal, and uh, he He's put on a hell of a fight. Number 15 in the world. He was ranked yeah. number 15 in the world or by the WBC. Yeah. You know, yeah. it actually felt like we were in Palestine. You know? <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, we, we want to thank you, Urban Jen, and I think they have a card coming up in January in, uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, but since we do have Tommy Espinoza in studio, um, first of all, we want to thank you for, for making the trip here. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about uh, your last fight. You fought uh, a kid named uh, Federico Vento, I believe his name was. Um, great, great kid. Uh, we, we got a chance to speak with him afterwards. But you said there was a little bit of trash talk going on before, before the fight. Uh, how did that all come about? Uh, I don't know. It was just like a weird, weird individual. Like, I, he must have been bipolar or something. <laughs> He's probably from some, like, island. You know, I, don't know yeah. 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 I don't know what they're putting in the food over there. Yeah, I don't know what they're putting in the food over there. But he was, you know, he he was finished, like, three or four times. And he was telling me I'm going to be his first finish, this and that. And, like, he would trash talk me on Facebook. So, I, you know, me being the guy I am, I ignored it. But it just started getting annoying, and it just tagged me every like every every day. So what I did was, um, so I I, I uh, so I replied to one of the comments, and I was like, "Listen, dude, like you're gonna be another finish on my highlight reel." And I think he realized like I wasn't messing around because you know I call everybody pal and bud and everybody like you know if they don't know me, they don't think I'm a fighter. You know, it's oh they don't see those. Simple. Uh... Yeah, well, yeah, that, that gives it away. Anything? Actually, one person <laughs> thought uh, I was born like this. So I was like, oh. negative. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, um, 
I, so, I want to like crack it open and get like my fortune. It looks like a fortune cookie. We're talking oh, yeah. about we're talking about uh, <laughs> it, it, Tommy's cauliflower ears. No, some, they're cool. Nobody some, messes with people with cauliflower no, ears. He's got some really. Awesome I thought that looked like ears. a chicken finger, like a, yeah. like a nice like chicken thunder. <laughs> but um, so anyway, the kid would like message me privately on Facebook, and he would be like, "Hey, bud, you know, I'm just you know trash talking for the venue. I'm trying to hype it up. You know, I want us to be the center of attention instead of the main event." I'm like. I was thinking this kid was out of a movie or something. I couldn't believe it. So what, what were some of the things he was saying, though? I mean, you said, you said he was trash talking. What was he saying? Uh, like, he was, you know, like... Without without getting us a, a fine here. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, of course. But yeah, it was a lot... Of, it, it'd be a lot of fining involved. But um, yeah, he was just talking about me. He was talking about my old lady. And, oh, that, that's yeah. crossing the line. So that's where, like, it got to me a little bit where, you know, I don't talk about people. I mind my own business. I train, you know, I do my talking in the cage. But it's just something about him. I just had to say something. And then I feel like he understood, like, where I was coming from. And I remember him messaging me or replying to one of the comments where I was, you know, I told him flat out, you know, I'm going to finish you whether it's standing or on the ground. And he said that might be true. And that's where I knew I had him where he was like, I might be true, but I'm coming to have a good time. And I was like, I knew as soon as he said that I was under his skin and that I mentally broke him. And then, um, so then after that, he stopped talking to me, you know, he messaged, you know, he stopped messaging me and then you know, we, we weighed in. He was saying, oh, I can't wait to see what you say. And then I was like, all right, Pavel, I'll see you then at the weigh-ins. We'll see what you say. But he didn't say anything to me. He just smiled, raised his eyebrows at me, and I was like, all right, you're a dork. So, <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, it, it was just, that was plain and simple. It was just, you know, he would, I thought he was bipolar. You know, I didn't know what wacko they they were trying to get me. I can only imagine what they're going to get me next next fight. <laughs> yeah. Will, so, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, Will said that he contacted Will. And said, "Hey, I'm gonna pay for my own plane ticket. I'm gonna fly my coach out. Um, there's no competition for me out here in Hawaii. I've, I've already beaten everybody." And uh, he came out here with a ton of confidence. And uh, I don't know if he did did any kind of, um, you know, search on you to see what, what you were gonna bring to the table. But that was a huge, huge step up for him, especially with his pro debut. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know. I he, he could have probably taken me lightly. I don't know. You know. I had him and, you know, half of Hawaii messaging me and adding me on Facebook just to trash talk. How about me. BJ Penn or uh, Max Holloway either? No, <laughs> that's the thing. I think because Max Holloway won, I think everybody in Hawaii thinks they can fight. And, like, I had some, some people out of, like, different weight classes messaging me and, like, saying they wanted me next. I'm like, shut up, dude. You, you fight at 170. Yeah. But, um, so is your nickname going to be, like, the Hawaiian killer or something like that we know. got oh rich my God. They, they've given yeah. me a couple names yeah. it was like the one was twinkle toes and i was oh, like wow. i don't know i was like i don't know if i want to take any of these yeah but we'll come up with a good one yeah no somebody worries. will come up with something yeah. that's catchy I, I just think it's interesting like we, we talked aj and i and, and bill after the fight we went out to uh to warrior bar for the after party mm -hmm. and you know, federico walked in and his eye was completely swollen he couldn't see out of it yeah I mean, he, he did a number on him but uh you know he's he's talking to us and uh you know, like like AJ said, he, he paid for his own flight here. He made less for the fight than it cost Oh, my God, him. I know. I uh, I saw, like, the ticket cost him, like, 1500 bucks. 1500 And that's just for him. Then he came with a corner man. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. And then it, and then his teammates or whatever, yes. or whoever was yeah. here already, I was like, you're, 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 yeah. you're crazy, man. Yeah, I would have stayed in Hawaii. I would have waited until somebody flew yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. But that being said, this kid was like, he was hassling me. Like I, was, I was more stressed out about him making it here than the actual training in the fight camp. Um, so the reason I took his fight was, you know, all right, you know, it's a good competition. You know, it's somebody out of state, you know, I, I might get away from the, you know, you know, he gets to showcase his skills over here. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'm down. You know, where, where is he from? Then they hit me with, oh, he's from Hawaii. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, bro. <laughs> And uh, so they were saying, don't worry, you know, uh, he'll get his ticket. Two weeks go by. You know, I didn't sign the contract until last minute until I, you know, I had a confirmation where he was for sure on, you know, yeah. had a ticket, you know, picture and everything. And then I was like, listen, we're going to take the fight if he can prove us, you know, he has a he has a proof of a purchase, ticket purchase. And yes, we'll sign the contract right away. Even my coach said it. He's like, there's no point in me, you know, I had guys pulling out on me and it was ridiculous. So, you know, it was tough. So 
those two weeks go by, I'm like, dude, where's this ticket? So then he starts trash talking me. I'm like, shut up, dude. I was just like, give me the ticket. I'm here. I'm going to fight you. And he kept saying I was scared because I didn't want to sign the contract right away. I'm like, dude, I lock in a contract with you that that voids me for another fight, you know? And mm -hmm. then I had another offer and I told him, I was like, hey guys, you know, I have this offer from a different venue. I'm going to take it if I don't get a confirmation within the next week. So the next week comes in and there's still nothing. So I'm like, dude, I'm going to take this fight. I was like, if you guys get me something, I'll give you two, three more days. I guess his kid's birthday was coming up. So I was like, all right, don't worry about it. Because I understand I have two. I just had my new one uh, a month ago. Yeah, I was gonna oh, ask you, you congratulations. Had, you had your second child like a week before the fight, right? Or yeah, two weeks yeah. before? Two weeks before the fight, yeah. What was that like? I mean... I know a newborn, you know. Yeah, uh, actually, it's been great. No, actually, no. Like she's like my first one. It's you know she, her name's Leona, and uh, she only wakes up twice a night just to eat. I change her diaper, and then that's it. You nice. know, and then she sleeps throughout the day. But that being said, um, it wasn't bad. You know, I was still able to train. I was still able to focus. You know, and now I have you know more to fight for, and. Not saying I didn't with my first one, but yeah. now it's like more like now it's like all right, yeah, yeah. it's so, so surreal now at this point. But um, so yeah, and then eventually the kid brings up the ticket, he sends us the purchase. I'm like, all right, sweet, good. And then the fight's booked, we're ready to go. So I signed the contract, I sent it back, and then I already had tickets sold, you know. So I was already there. Mm -hmm. But my word was if the kid doesn't show up, you know, being in Hawaii, I have guys, you know, 45 minutes from here pulling out on me. But, um, and then he came through, so I was really happy he came through. Yeah, and it was a, it was a <clears throat> second round TKO, I believe. Yeah. I believe yeah. he hit with a body shot, right? Yeah, caught yeah. him with a knee, kept dropping his Ah, uh, you hit him in the nuts. I saw the ah, whole thing. I was right there, it. I saw it. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> it, was, it was a great fight, and I'll tell you what, he, he is a great kid. Um, he is Federico. nice. What? Yeah. How? It, oh, he's, he's nice. He was, yeah. talking about, well, he was talking about my girl. I know, but yeah. afterwards, I mean, you know what? <laughs> Leading up to the fight, everybody yeah. talks their smack. You know, I mean, I didn't say anything about his family. I can care less. You yeah. know, I mean, you know, good for him. You know, you yeah. know, congrats on your kid. You know, on the birthday. But that that's like very like yeah, yeah. you know very low. Probably. See, every lie. everybody's trying to be like Conor McGregor. That's now, the problem. You know, yeah. and uh, you have to, like you said, he's, he's he told you he's going to try to sell the fight. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And he he was like uh, like Eric said you know I I was spent I don't want to say I spent time with him but I drove him and his coach back and forth a few times and uh, you know after the fight mm -hmm. we went down to the Warrior Bar and uh, spent some time with him and he he's such a great kid and you could tell his passion for the sport you know just think about it he out of his own pocket fifteen hundred bucks I think he got paid two hundred dollars to fight yeah he made something yeah. like that yeah um, you know because I know part of his per his contract was to sell tickets. It's pretty hard to sell tickets when you're, when you're in Hawaii. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's crazy. So, uh, you know, he, he came out here for the love of it, you know, and, and he took out a, you know, a huge competitor, um, you know, with a lot more experience than him. And, you know, um, it was it was a good fight, you know. So, you know, we want to wish him the best of luck, too. Of course, wish no, you the yeah, best of luck. Course, you're the local guy, you. so, of course, we want to thank you. wish you, it. you know, the best of success. But, um, you know, uh, it was a great night of fights. You know, it's that's three weeks ago, four weeks ago. We're still talking about how, how good those fights were. Yeah. So you're uh, you're training over at Pure, right? With, yeah. Uh, with Andy. And are you an instructor there? Yeah. Uh, so I uh, I teach the Friday night uh, Muay Thai class. Okay. So you know, I'm actually now that we talk about that, I'm actually really happy that you know I uh, I'm part of the teaching staff and they they trust me to you know to teach the newer guys. The people with less less experience, and you know, it's from other people's points. You know, it's oh, you're an instructor, but you know, it, it means a lot. You know, being able to influence you know this new generation that's coming in because I'm gonna get old. I'm gonna have to retire eventually, and then you got the new guys coming in. So at least I can fall back on you know helping out with teaching or eventually you know opening up my own thing. You know, but that's later down the year. Right now, I'm focusing you know on being my you know being the instructor at Pure. Helping out as much as I can, and you know, cover classes if I can. You know, That's just awesome. get back a little bit since they give me a lot. Yeah. I've never actually been there. I talked to Andy, but I, you know, I've never been to Pure. I got to get over there. Yeah. Seems like a, yeah, nice let's go a great on. facility. Yeah. Let's do a remote show from Pure MMA one of these yeah, days. Yeah, we can do that. Do it in the cage. We yeah. got a little cage. Right in the cage. Right in the cage. Nice. I I know those of you watching, you know, and to answer your questions, no, we are not supermodels. But thanks for watching. <laughs> um, you know, we're just Tommy's we're, a good looking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is a good looking. Barely. Dude. So uh, I wouldn't be doing this if I was if I had a career in something else. <laughs> again, you, you've got this fight coming up on Saturday, King King of the Cage. So I, I really want to thank you for coming in here during Fight Week. Yeah, no worries, um, thank you. But 
Tell us, you're, you're fighting Eddie Alvarez, not not the UFC, for those, for those of you <laughs> listening and, and watching, not yeah. Eddie Alvarez, the UFC fighter. This is Eddie Alvarez, a uh, local guy. Um, he used to fight out of ATT. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Where's gonna, he trained now? Uh, I'm not I sure. Think I think at a Car- Gracie's gym now. Yeah, Car- he- Carmelo had had the school in it, and then it's no longer there. Um, but uh, I'm not sure exactly where Eddie went to. But... Is there any trash talk with this fight? Uh, actually, no. It's been very quiet. Um, actually, I think we were friends on Facebook, but I think he mm-hmm. deleted me because I was saying... Damn FaceTime. Let's start trash talking. But, uh, Let's go. Uh, You're live in front of probably two, three million people right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, actually... Um, so from what I heard, he's he's you know he's he's saying that you know I shouldn't have. Actually, I was supposed to fight this kid a couple times, and you know, I don't know the promoters say he didn't want, but they were telling me that he didn't want it. He would turn down the fight, and I was like, all right, well that kind of sucks. But so King of the Cage contacted me. Actually, that was the venue I was going to fight for if they didn't get me this fight, and uh, I was already yeah sure you know send me a contract, and right away they sent me a contract. And they were like, would you be interested in fighting Eddie Alvarez? I'm like, boom, sign me up. And uh, so it was actually right before our our kid, uh, Kevin uh, Gocklin, one of my training partners, he was fighting for XEC. And uh, I saw him there. So he was corning. And I was going to be, I was going to be, you know, be mean about it and be like, hey, dude, you know, you're, you're this and that, this and that. And I was actually my, one of my coaches was like, just be nice to him, talk to him. And I was like, that's like. 360 degrees of what I wanted to do <laughs> but so I went up to him and I was like hey dude you know did that guy contact you you know did you see the contract he goes oh yeah, yeah I saw it I didn't get to him I was like dude just take the fight that was a good fight for you good fight for me just take it it is a very good fight yeah and how uh, awesome is it to have you know um on, on your on your record you know win over Eddie Alvarez because that's all people see. Yeah. Eddie Alvarez. They don't see his pitcher. No, exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? Be, so that's, that's bragging right probably thinking there. about the UFC fight. <laughs> yeah. Everybody asks me, like, yeah. oh, you're fighting the UFC fight? I'm like, no. I know that yeah. annoys him because, uh, you know, we've, we've interviewed it him. It does not time. annoy him. He <laughs> loves it. He loves it. He's got 5,000 Facebook friends because of his name. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I, there's a big height difference here, too. I mean, he's, he's pretty... Yeah, tall, I'm, I'm actually I'm I'm pretty tall for this weight class. I'm almost I'm half an inch off of five uh, being five eight. Wow. How's how's the weight cut going for the fight? We are in it's weight. it's actually going really good. Yeah, uh, it, it actually my first weight cut was like my toughest, but now it's you know the self control's there mm-hmm. and you know everything's just becoming a habit now. And I'm, I'm you know I eat. You what know, are you at right now? Like, what are you walking around at? Uh, well, not, I mean not your walk around weight right now you're right now I mean, I'm, you're I'm, I'm, I'm three, a buck 36 yeah I'm a buck right. 36 so um, I'm continuing you know um, so I'm eating clean and I should be like 33 32 by tomorrow wow, wow. yeah I haven't seen 33 since I'm like two. Oh my god <laughs> everybody everybody every time I spar with somebody or they're like oh well, wait do you fight at you fight at 35 I'm like no I'm like I fight at 25 I'm like, Get out of here, dude. You're, like, too big for that weight class. Yeah. And there's guys that are bigger than me and the same height as me, and they're like, you fight at 25? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, looking at you, I would say you... you 200 make, pounds, no, easy. No, no, I, no, I, no. I, I, I would think that you would be, like, a lightweight fighter. Yeah. I mean, you're tall, lanky. No, yeah. I'm too small for that. Actually, yeah. I lost my first fight at 35, and I was like, yeah, because I couldn't find anybody at 25. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going down to 25. I'm going to yeah. stay at my Which is class. awesome, because, I mean, to think about the UFC, the 25 weight division is so slim. There's so much room for opportunity you might, there. Might do Mighty Mouse one day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole. That's the goal. Eventually, you know. Eventually, if I, you know, I, I am one of the fortunate ones to make it, you know, to the UFC roster. You know, I'll be grateful for it. But, you know, time will tell. Yeah. Until then, you know, I just got to continue fighting either the local circuits or travel. Now, th- this fight is at the Sugar House. Yes, at the Sugar House Casino in Philly. Now, is it? Is this fight because uh, you you and Eddie are big big names in this in this area? Is this for a title or anything? Or no, it's it just... uh just, yeah, it's just a fight. Okay. Yeah. Um, Man, we should have put a title on the line. We should have like a My MMA News I actually radio have, title. I have a championship belt yeah. coming. So, yeah. yeah. So hey, maybe nice. it's for a title, Tommy. Yeah. Oh, I'll I'll take it. Wait, who, who, am I, who am I smacking yeah. around for that title? Um, yeah. But no, I'm actually excited about this fight. You know, I, you know, he, I've been, you know, I was looking that he's been working a lot of jujitsu or whatever. So, you know, I, probably after I hit him, he might try to wrestle and work some jujitsu, and you guys might see some jujitsu from me. So. Nice. Yeah. So nice. I'm excited. 
I'm excited for it. So how do you how do you see this? I mean, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but how do you see this fight playing out? Um, well, he's a tough kid, so you know, obviously, you can't sleep on anybody. Um, well, me having the winning record, you know, it's it's a target on my back, and the only thing I'm looking forward to is you know fighting smart. Like when I fought Federico, I was just pissed, you know. I had one of your old students come up to me, you know, yeah. trash talk. I was, you know, that's another topic. Yeah, silly yeah, kid. But uh, <laughs> um, but that being said, uh, I don't take them light. You know, whether I have the winning record or we're the same height or same, re- you know, I, I don't I don't care for it. I just I'm focused on one thing, and it's winning either standing or on the ground. What is what is his record? Uh, I think he's two and two, five hundred. Yeah, he's on a two loss. Now, have, have you ever trained with Eddie? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I went up there a couple times. Um, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. So, I mean, is, is there anything that you see that from he's, that, that training with him that he might be able to uh, he's qu- use? He is quick and a point fighter. I think he's a point fighter. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I'd agree with that. And um, we'll see after I blast him with a couple shots and my kicks. You know, that's you know, I'm long. I'm going to use my range. So, you know, and then uh, if he tries to shoot down on me, he's going to have some elbows and some knees to eat. That's about it. Yeah, th- I mean, this is really a, a good fight. It I mean, is a it, good fight. Two two top guys in this area. Um, yeah, it's it's an exciting. That could yeah. be that could be like a UFC fight one day. No, you're right. You're um, absolutely right. But uh, so you, you got that fight on Saturday. You got the Maverick MMA win like a month, not even a month ago. I don't think it is now, right? No, yeah. It, wait, almost. What's this crazy thing? He's fighting again in December. Yeah, <laughs> that's what. Yeah, I just got tickets to that. So I'm excited. What's going going on with that? Uh, So I'll be fighting for Glory Kickboxing 48 on the undercard against uh, my opponent will be Jonathan DeBella. And that's at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, Yeah, at the theater. Yeah, it'll be at 125. So the good thing about that is the kid is undefeated. I think he is 4-0 at 125. Uh, Hopefully I'll be 4-0 at 125 come Saturday. So it'll be a great fight. No, no. Have you fought kickboxing professionally? Uh, no, no. Um, I've just done you know my stand up, but yeah. I, I focus a lot on my stand up. Mm-hmm. So that'll be good. It's my last fight. I don't have to worry about taking another fight. So I actually I plan on taking off probably a month unless I get a good. <laughs> yeah, I take a month off. Unless right? I get a well, I'll be training, but I won't be fighting for a month. But uh, unless I get a good offer, then you know I'll probably be back in the cage again. So how did that fight all come about with uh, the glory? Um. So. My buddy Craig, Craig Hannigan, you guys, I don't know yeah, if you guys yeah. know him, he, yeah. he's usually my matchmaker, and he pitched me the idea, I guess <coughs> Lou Neglia posted something, he's looking for a 125 or this and that, and I've, and I've, <coughs> I've dealt with Lou, good guy, yeah. sweet dude, and he was actually my first uh, pro promotion that I fought for. Um, so he posted it out there, threw it out there, and you know how it is, you know, he, you see glory, the title glory, everybody wants to fight on there, so a bunch of different people from different states are commenting on it. So I get a group message, and then I'm like, what the heck is this? And then I see the glory ops, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, throw me in there. See what he says. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. I was like, it'll be a good deal. It'll be a solid fight to end the year with. And he messaged Lou. Lou was like, all right, let's do it. And then I was on the card. How yeah. awesome fighting at Madison Square Garden. The it's biggest exciting, man. stage ever. And, that, you know, there's a lot of history with it. And yeah. for me to be able to say, hey, I fought there, you know, it's it's – it might seem small, but it's an accomplishment for right, me, right. you know. So I like I, I dwell on the little things, and I'm like happy. Like I don't show it, but I'm like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I'm gonna be at MSG. So That's awesome. I'm happy about it. Congratulations, Thank man! You. That is absolutely awesome. So you you have a full time job. I mean, fighting fighting isn't something that you're doing 24 um, seven. How do you go about you know your your regular day job? Your, you know, managing. Uh, your time with family, like you said, you've got, you've got a newborn, um, then coming in to do these silly little radio shows. <laughs> what, uh, what is your full-time job? Uh, so I work for the New Jersey Department of Transportation, so I have a really good job. And um, it, you know what? It's a lot of – I got to like, talk to the old lady when I get home, like, hey, like when, I, like when we started, we had our son. I started this. I was like, listen, this is how it's going to be. I have to either be all in or I'm not going to do this because – Nobody makes it, you know, half-assing it. Right. So, um, since day one, basically, my days are, you know, I go to work from 7.30 to 4, but I'm up at, like, 5, you know, getting my stuff ready, 
Then, as soon as I'm done with work, I shoot over to the gym uh, and do my strength and conditioning from 4.30 to 6, sometimes 6.30. And then I'm back at the gym, you know, just training until 9.30, 10 o'clock. And then I get home, and then that's where I'm at. I got to be a dad. So that's why occasionally, you know, you don't catch me at many uh, MMA venues or, you know, just going out. I usually just stay home. I'm watching Adventure Time or, you know, Slug Terror with the kids, so... You know, it is what it is, but... So the Department of Transportation, what, you, do you drive bus? Or no, 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 no. So I work on the highway. I work on Route 80. So my section actually is from the point five to 20. So I go to Hackettstown. So I work here in Columbia. So what, what do you do? Um, I do highway stuff. So I, you know, I have to patch a hole. I patch a hole. I have oh, to do maintenance. Okay. So to... when you said Department of Transportation, I... I thought... DOT. Yeah. Uh, NJ DOT. Right. Uh, I thought maybe you... You drove something because I own a little oh, yeah, company. We, we jumped so out. I was going to say, hey, Tommy, if you ever need to. I got a CDL, to, to bro. Drive. What do you want? <laughs> See this? What do you want to drive? I got a so, CDL. Hey, so if, if the job doesn't work out with the, the Department of Transportation, the fighting thing doesn't work out, I have a backup plan for All you. All right. Okay? Beautiful. I do have you a You got to offer plan. some bennies yes. and then I'm in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, so, so this Saturday, Sugar House Casino. When are you going down for, you know, it's in Philadelphia. It's not too far of a drive for you. You're just going down weigh-ins or you going? Uh, no, so I'll be staying over. So um, so I'll be finishing my wake cut, uh, you know, f- day of Friday, Friday morning. Mm-hmm. And then um, me and uh, Kevin, Kevin uh, are going to shoot over to, to Philly, weigh in, do our stuff, and then, you know, just relax until day of the fight. That's awesome. I'll tell you what, King of the Cage, too, is uh, one of the bigger promotions. You know, Ke- uh uh, Eric, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Eric and I were talking about this on the way down to uh, the kickboxing match the other day. You know, you got UFC solid number number one, Bellator creeping up, and then who's number three? You know, is it? Yeah. It could be King of the Cage. It could be, you know, it, w- it was World Series. Of Fighting, it was. But yeah, now they, they, they know, have they, that professional league. Yeah, they, now, changed, right? they changed their name. And I think it. You know, they, they're still there, but I think they kind of shot themselves on a foot with yeah. that. I mean, I thought at WSOF was great. Yeah, it was. Mean, it really was. You're rebranding, I think, by yeah. not changing anything. But when you think about a name, everybody knows King of the Cage. Yeah, yeah. of course. Everybody. Everybody. I, one of the first King of the Cage I ever went to was like in night years in 2000. It was in San Jacinto, California, um, the uh, one of the casinos out there. And, um, you know, some of the guys that were – on like the first Ultimate Fighter were on, were on this card. Yeah. And, you know, they were just coming up in the pros. I go into, uh, you know, the, the restroom there, and, uh, you know, I, I unzip, do, do my thing. <laughs> Where's I, this going? L- listen, listen. So I, I, I you know, I, I hear this this guy, like, talking next to him, like, and I see, like, this big figure. It's what? freaking Ken Shamrock's, like, taking a leak right next to me. Right? Now, what was the figure that you saw? <laughs> <laughs> but he's wearing he's wearing these like leather like chaps oh, and, come and it's on. like good old ken right yeah it's like 120 degrees this yeah. is like southern california in the desert and, and yeah. ken, ken shamrock's got on chaps leather chaps at the fight yeah. what the hell is this guy doing amazing but uh amazing but yeah. there's been some huge think about some of the champions that came out of king of the cage i mean joey riggs he was a yep he was a king of the cage champion um, they have nice belts too. So win one of those belts. Hopefully, you know, I'm nice. hoping after. I'll those, buy it yeah. off you too. I'm, I, <laughs> I buy that. So I'll buy your gloves. I'll buy even nice. for glory. I'll buy your glory gloves. So if they try to take them, you know, shove them down your pants or something like yeah, that, so that they don't want them. There. Yeah, yeah you, you can avoid the contract. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a pair of glory fight one gloves from uh, Gabriel Varga. Uh, he's a former glory champion. Yeah. You know, nice. I have a lot of King of the Cage gloves, but I could always add more. Yeah, I don't think I get to keep those though. You shove them down your pants, you keep them. <laughs> They're not going to go and get yeah, them. The, commi- the commission's, the commission's uh, kind of, they enforce that now, especially in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so what's, Did, what's it like for you, though, the the final 20, you, you step on the scale, and now you've got 24 hours, rehydrate, and you're there. Like, you're you're there, like, in Philadelphia, you know, you're going to be there. Like, what's in, going on in your mind, counting down the, those final? It might final be weird, but I'm always, like, on autopilot till the day of the fight. Um, and what I mean by that is like, like I'm not dwelling on the fight. Like a lot of people focus on it and think about it. And I'm like, I'm actually more nervous for my fights at the beginning of my camp. Like where I'm like, I watch the fights. I'm like, oh, the, you know, you get the shakes and stuff. You're like, what the hell? I was like, what if he hits me with that? But uh, so when I get closer to the fight, I'm like, all right, you know, I've done this before. You know, I do it every day. You know, it's just another day. You know, another day in the office. You know, I step in, I do my thing. You know, I do my little things that I do. 
And then, you know, that's it. You know, as soon as I step on that scale, I'm like, 25. All right, good. Yeah. I'll be 45 by tomorrow. I'll nice. gain a lot of weight. But uh, I, I, you know, and I'm always thinking of like my biggest thing after my 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 weigh in is like, all right, don't chug the liquids because a lot of people make that mistake where you see them just chug, uh -huh. and they don't they don't eat you know the right amount of food that they need to eat. Like that happened to me once where I was like super bloated and I was going to eat and then I felt like I was gonna explode. I was like, oh, yeah. never again. But I've, uh, I've actually seen some uh, some of these diets that you know nutritionists you know um, like for Matt Hamill for example. You know, and you would think, like, after a weigh-in, you know, you want to get proteins, liquids, everything in, you know. Uh, and I've seen them where it's like, okay, um, eight-ounce piece of fish. Three hours later, um, this. Three hours later, this. You know what I mean? So it's it's not even like it's just trying to gain weight, get as much food yeah. in as possible to gain weight. There's, like, a, a science to this. Yeah, um, like, that's what I'll do. Like, like it sucks. Like, I want to eat everything. And, like, I'll have that bad tendency of, like, buying a lot of, like, junk. Yeah. And then I only take two or three bites of it. Yeah. And then the day I want to actually finish it, my son finishes it. I'm like, dude, what'd wow. you do? And he leaves a container there. So no Chinese buffet for you after you weigh in on Friday? No, no. Yeah. So I, I still eat healthy. I, you know, I'll eat fish, vegetables, and uh, depending on how my body takes this, you know, like the potatoes, I may have potatoes. What, but What does a cheat day look like? <sighs> cheat day. Do you have those? Uh, yeah, I, I, I snack. It's like, yeah. I don't really have a cheat day. Like, I snack, and that's it. And, like, I'll gain, like, five or ten pounds. Like, if I'm not... Do you eat, like, Kit Kats or... Oh, my God, yes. That, <laughs> Snickers. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to tell you a crazy Gummies. story. Gummies. Oh, my God. It's... it's. I'm not going to mention his name because he's a well-known fighter. Um, but I've seen... It, it's almost like a, an addiction. Yes. Like, I've seen... Where, where he would go into a, a convenience store and buy 10 Snicker bars, 10 Snicker bars, and I boom, 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 just to eat them. I got to meet him. Yeah, I would do that. And yeah. the, my, my problem is I'm, like, worse than my dog. My dog will eat and eat and eat until he throws up. I'm the same way. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh. I'm like, <laughs> I can't. That's a good way to lose weight. <laughs> like, I'll t and, I'll, and I'll tell her, and I'll be like, hey, I can't, you know, I'm full, I'm full. And while I'm eating more, I'm like, oh. I'm like, no more. I was like, keep that away from me. And then I'm still eating, and then I'm like, bloated. I'm like, oh my God, that's yeah. gross. How about this, right? So when you drink beer, right, you piss a lot. Yeah. Right? I've heard that fighters will drink beer to lose weight. Uh, Have you ever heard of this? No, I've never heard of that. Actually, I... Do you want to try it? Do you want to try it for this fight coming up? No, no I'm only, I'm only kidding. But I, I guess think a good of, body shot. I'm going <laughs> down. I'm think about it that. though, right? You drink one or two beers, right, Eric? You know. Yeah, you're you going. drink a lot. I, I, I know, but think about it. You drink two beers, you hit the head, and you piss more than and that you're two going. beers. Yeah. You well, know what I mean? So it, it might be a good way to. Uh, the trick is to not break the seal, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> once you do that, then it's. But uh, yeah. I actually, um, we're going to keep it nameless, but one of my buddies actually right before a fight, or well, a day before, we drink beer because, you know, it's got a lot of carbs and sugars in it. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're nuts. I'm like, I know yeah. it's got all that good stuff in it, but I'm like, for yeah. a fight? Yeah. Like, day before Cer a fight? Cerrone right? does that. He likes to, he likes to drink a, a beer. Oh, yeah. Um, like, I've he heard of people taking beer. shots <laughs> before, like, the yeah. fight. I'm like, dude, you're nuts. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, you're nuts, dude. I can't do it. I would feel sick. I even like drinking now. I get sick to my stomach. I don't drink anymore. Yeah. Like I had a half a beer after my Maverick fight. I was like, you can yeah. have it, dude. Yeah, I guess once you once you kind of like phase yourself out of it, it's yeah, it's not really something that you. Yeah, afraid. occasionally, but like when I drink, I go off into the, into the deep end. So that's yeah. that's why another reason why that's I don't a good drink. Thing. Keep yeah. you out of jail too. Yeah, yeah. No. bring the bail money when I drink. <laughs> yeah. So did you uh, did you get to watch any of the fights this weekend? Who, me? Yeah. Um, actually, no. I mean, I did. That was, it, it was in Poland, wasn't it? At like two, well, three. There was, there was also two. Bellator 185. I or, did watch Bellator 185. Yeah, yeah, uh, 184. Or it was 185. Was it 185? Yeah. Okay, Bellator. I did watch Bellator 185. So I'm going to tell you about uh, what we did Friday night, Bill and I. Yeah. It was pretty cool. We went to Willie Siska, the I promoter. Know. I was of, supposed to go. Yeah, the, prom <laughs> the promoter of Maverick. So we went to his house. And uh, what he had was like a, a viewing party mm -hmm. where the people from Spike and, and Bellator came in, and, oh, wow. and they paid us each. They paid us each a couple hundred dollars just to watch Bellator. Really? Yeah. And talk about it. And talk about it. That's so awesome. I, I was gonna watch the fight for free, you know, at, at home. Yeah. And I get this message from Willie. Hey, do you wanna you wanna make some money watching fights? 
you don't have to pull my arm. So we went there. Then they tell us to get liquored up. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, that's yes. awesome. So we're, we're drinking. We're watching the fights. And, and I was driving. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, Bill, Bill was driving, Bill was driving so he wasn't drinking. But he was a responsible one that yeah. night. <laughs> so Willie, Willie's wife is giving me shots like throughout the night. I probably had like five or six shots <laughs> on, on top of the, the beers and then the, the rum and cokes. And the, they're just... Food is the food. Right? They had, uh, wow. it, was, it was amazing. So they're, they're talking to us about the card. And like, there was a, like a 30-minute interview process before... Um, you know, and they're asking us, like, what do you think about the brand, about Bellator, where it's going, uh, where it was, that type of thing. You know, what do you th- know about the card? Do you know any yeah. of the fighters on it? So, basically, I was doing what I do every day anyway. Right. And uh, then, you know, the fights start, and they had microphones all over. And then they had these things. It looked, they might have been, like, sen- motion sensors or something. Because they had, like, things, like, on the table. They had cameras. There was a cameraman. There was a woman typing, uh, you know, our, our Every, Are you sure you weren't at court? <laughs> right? But no, it, it was very, it was very cool. It was a I've never experienced anything like that. But anyway, they're, they're gathering data about it, and uh, you know, then after a fight, like after they would watch us, they weren't even watching the, the three people that were there. They weren't even really watching the fights. They were watching our movements. Like, do you pick up the phone? Uh, do you go to the bathroom? Do you go like? You know, what did you think about this ad? What did you think about that? What did you notice? Those type of things. So it was, it was pretty, it was pretty interesting. Um, you know, and there was things that I picked up watching the fight that I never really noticed before. Um, so I, I found that to be really cool. What, what, did, what do you think? About I thought it was a really good experience. Yeah. It was just the whole idea of them coming in and, and accepting our opinions and what we were saying. And, and I mean, you gave great criticism. That guy was in love with you. He was, he was yeah. like, well, I can listen to you talk. Most men are in love. <laughs> 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 yeah. You could have done nothing by yourself. I mean, honestly, I mean, it was incredible. The you know what sucks? You gave him. This is what sucks. I was part of this panel, Tommy. He was supposed I to. Was, so I get, I get my phone call for the pre-interview, you know, and asking me questions. <laughs> what do you do? MMA Signatures. I have a gym. I sponsor fighters. And MMA Signatures, we were sponsoring Heather Hardy. Yeah. Uh, for this past weekend. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I saw that. You know, and I told him, I said, yeah, we're sponsoring Heather Hardy. <clears throat> You're disqualified. Right there. Because <clears throat> we were too close to the game. Oh, right. You know, and that's what he said. He said, you you know too many people. You're too close to the game. We can't even have you there. Oh, he said, right. if somebody happened to fall off, then we could bring you in. So then that night I'm praying that either Bill or Eric fall off. You know, because I, I I like money. Sure. You know, <laughs> I'm only kidding. Like, <laughs> you know, I would I would have enjoyed to get smashed. Yeah. And got got two hundred dollars to yeah, do it. Of course. You know what I mean? But it, it was pretty cool. So no, it was the, a great experience. So the, I would have loved to have been there. So there was five fights on the card, um, on on the main card, and the the headlining fight was uh, Gegard Gassas, or Gegard <laughs> Musasi. Why did I say Gassasi? Musasi. Uh, against Alexander Shlomenko, the former yeah. middleweight champion for Bellator. Now, did you get to watch that fight? No, I didn't. I caught some highlights though. So, yeah. what what did you, what did you think? You saw the, the highlights. Of, did I you don't see know. his I, eyes shut? Yeah, I saw. I yeah. saw Musasi's eye. I've never seen him like that before. So, so yeah, he got he got lumped up. Uh, like I think it was the first yeah. round. The doctor could have stopped that yeah, fight. Yeah, I, I thought they I thought they were definitely going to stop the fight due to the eye, um, yeah. for fighter safety, but. The, the fight the fight went on and I'm not sure that he he really won the, I mean it was a close fight yeah exactly I, and that, and that's the problem you can't let it go to the judges but I'm, I'm not entirely sure that he he did enough to really win the fight um he did have control on the ground yeah I was gonna say he bit, did have some like cage cage uh, cage, cage control, control yeah but, uh, but if you if you did it like the the way that a lot of fans who aren't like really into the sport, you know, if you just like looked at their faces, and you would say, "Well, Shalanko won because yeah. yeah. uh, Musasi's eye had a pretty good mouse. It was more, yeah. it was more like a rat, like a sewer rat, oh, yeah. New York City sewer rat than a mouse." Yeah. But uh, so that was the fight, and then uh, as you said, Heather Hardy on the card. Oh yeah. And uh, she and was, she'll be back. I'm, I, she's a machine. I'll tell you, Heather. I, I mean, she's a world boxing champion. You know. However, the girl that she fought, Williams. Yeah. She was tough. She, no, oh she God, is no joke. Those. She's. I mean, Heather's going into this undefeated. She's undefeated in boxing. She's a world champion. And she had that hype, too. Yes. A girl now, didn't care. Yes. She went in. Now she's fighting a girl, kickboxer, undefeated kickboxer, undefeated MMA, undefeated boxing. You know, I mean, if you want to build somebody up, 
you don't put them against a killer. Killer, yeah, exactly. You know, and that's what Williams was, was a killer. So yeah, most people didn't know that, though. Right. So they found out. Yeah. I think Bell's were kind of underestimated. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I saw some of those elbows right before that kick. I'm like... Yeah, you know she she lost though Heather lost, but I think her star power has risen um, because yeah. she put on a hell of a fight. She was in a, a middle of a war, and it's her second fight in MMA, second one for Bellator, and in both fights she was completely bloody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got caught. You know? uh, that doesn't over happen the eye, in, yeah. in most men's I know. fights, and, and she's going in there and like. Getting her nose busted. Yeah. And she's a yeah, warrior. She's a solid she's competitor, yeah. yeah. Maybe we could have her on the show coming up. Yeah. Let her heal for a little bit first. Yeah, actually, I saw the picture of her. Did you see her after the fight? Yeah, yeah. I should yeah. have sent that to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. She, she actually looks great. Yeah. You know, a little cut, but that, that's about it. She shifted like the nose. Girl. It's cool. Yeah. You really got to get her into the gym to do it. Yeah, we're going to do a seminar with her. Um, you know, we're just working out the details, and we'll have her up here for a seminar. She's a great girl. Great fighter. We wish her the best of luck, and I, I could see her being a future champion. You know, maybe, um, I mean, a lot of fighters need that first loss. I mean, she's never lost, ever, in boxing or MMA. I mean, sometimes that, that loss, you know, sparks something. And, uh, you know, this will get her back in the gym, and, and I could see her being a world champion, you know. Yeah. So the UFC, they were in Poland this, over the weekend. Um, it was a Saturday afternoon card here what time in, was it on? in the States. Like, I think it started at, like, noon, maybe? Yeah. Noon like, or one, yeah. Noon, like noon, like, and the main card started at three um, on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, so, Cowboy Cerrone, we talked about this last week. He was going into the fight, first time ever in his career, where he's had back-to-back -back losses. He gets TKO'd in the first round by Darren Till. Now he's got three losses in a row. What do you think happens to Cowboy Cerrone? I, I me personally, I think he is such a draw still. Yeah. You know, he could lose, think about, like, like uh, Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell, I think he lost four or five in a row or something like that. Um, Cowboy is still, people love this man. I, I don't know what's left on his contract. Yeah. However, he's still so marketable. You know, um, I think it would be crazy if the UFC decided to let him go. Do you think um, this is going to uh, cost his uh, headlining? It, you think oh, gonna, absolutely. Gonna, I, yeah, I don't think he headlines yeah. for I mean, and they only really had him headlining over there because... You know, it was, it was on UFC fight. Right. Like he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't really headline. He wouldn't headline like a pay per view yeah. or anything over here. What do you um, think though? He needs to go back to fifty five. <clears throat> what What should he do? Because I mean, his his three losses in the row all came at seventy, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's tough, tough. Like it's it's really tough to say because he he didn't really have much success uh, in his last fight at one fifty five uh, where he went. I don't know if it was his last one, but he fought Dos Anjos for the belt. Right, right, right. Um, so I, I think he moved to 170 right after that, or he might have had one more 55. But um, it's it's really tough. I mean, and for a guy like that, where you go 55 to 70, you know, now you got if he goes back down to 55, he's got to build his way back into the rankings again. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a tough call. I I definitely think he sticks around in the UFC. It's just. Who do they give him next? Right. Um, you know, he's got to get a win. Yeah, he, he really needs but, it. But Darren Till, I mean, yeah. this guy, most people never heard of the guy. Never heard of the guy up until last week. And here he goes, and, you know, his first UFC headlining event, he TKO's Cerrone yeah. in, the, in the first round. So. And so, I think he broke his nose also, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 caught him with that elbow. Yeah. 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 So that tattoo Dill has, is that Paige Van Zandt or what? What's going on with that? <laughs> I need to, I need to find out. Of it. I saw that. I'm like, whoa, that looks too familiar. I think I've liked their pictures a couple times. That's funny. That's funny. So. But then there was some controversy, right? For for uh, um, I think it was the fight before that with Conor McGregor coming up. Oh, that was, oh, that yeah, was the earlier illegal. in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, so the... yeah, Conor was uh, Conor's there in a suit. You know, he's not an official corner man. Right. He's, he's friends with uh, what's what's his name? Uh, Artem Lobov. Yeah. Um, and Connor goes over to the corner and kind of like is trying to coach him. Yeah. And you can't really get to the cage, and that's why there's security a, there. That's right. why you're, you have a corner guy. Um, yeah. He's Connor McGregor. Can yeah. he do whatever the hell he wants? Yeah. So normally, <laughs> a, a, you know, a referee wouldn't stop the fight to 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 take care of that. Somebody else on the outside would take care. of But the referee right. was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Picture yeah. Mark Gagger. Oh, yeah. you know, like yeah. what, what was so, he thinking? Uh, I don't know. It's because it's Conor McGregor, you know. Yeah. Everybody, everybody kind of blew it up. But then, too, on top of that, then now the media, some of the MMA media, is making 
a big deal about some of the words that Connor said backstage. Yes. And I think that's oh, yeah, totally, the, the I think slur it's totally or ridiculous. Um, yeah. You know that they're even making an issue about this. It's you know, amazing. He said something in private to his friend, right. and somebody had to listen to like had a hot mic, you yeah. know, and uh, whatever. It's it's ridiculous. But um, also on the card, uh, Carolina uh, uh she beat Jody Esquivel, uh, unanimous decision. And then uh, we, we talked really weren't a whole lot of names um, that most yeah. most fans would know, but uh, there was a standing. Rear naked choke. Did you did you see oh, yeah, this? I saw I that. That's like an awkward so angle. This is pretty pretty crazy. Uh, Jan Blackovic, he, uh, he he gets a, a, a rear naked choke, standing, and he's like not even like completely behind his opponent. It was against Devin Clark. He's like off to the side and choked. It was it was pretty crazy. You got to see it, but um, it's definitely one of them submission of the year contenders. Wow. Uh, what's going on? We've got we've got Bellator. Uh, 186 coming up at Penn State. A lot of yep. local flavor yep. on that. Said so we got Brett Martinez uh, out of out of our gym and also the Rat Pack fighting out of um, that night. Brett's gonna call in. I talked to him uh, uh, earlier tonight. Brett's gonna. Uh, we wanted him to come in the studio, but uh, he's he's fighting Friday night um, that over there in Penn State. Gonna be cutting wheat. Um, we're we're actually going down in the limo. So if anybody wants to go down, uh, we're actually sponsoring a title fight that night. Um, Alima McFarland. Is uh, one of MMA signatures uh, sponsored fighters. Uh, she's fighting for the uh, 125. Yeah, the 125 inaugural belt. You know, so uh, hopefully we have a champion underneath our our uh, MMA signatures banner, and uh, maybe we could have her call in too after that fight. Yeah. Um, or even next week. Also got UFC Fight Night 119 this weekend in uh, Brazil, and uh, on the card our buddy Jim Miller. He's, uh, he's on the, the main card. He's fighting nice. uh, Francisco Trinaldo. Awesome. Uh, you've got Damian Maya versus Colby Covington on that card. Wow, that's um, a good fight. It's a good fight, but, uh, you know, I I still think it's too early for Colby Covington. Yeah. My, to, to go against a Damian Maya. Yeah, especially in Brazil. In Brazil, yeah. 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 Um, so, hey, he can, he can do it. I'm not going to say he can't. Right. Uh, anything could happen, but I think... I think for a guy that they're building up in Colby Covington, Colby Covington, you don't throw him to Damian Maya, especially right. in Brazil. Um, just, I don't think it's a good move. Yeah, him. that's definitely the, not. The uh, headlining fight, Derek Brunson taking on Lyoto Machido is returning. I think he was gone for over a year. Yeah, we haven't seen Lyoto in a while. Um, what do you think about that? Brunson. Brunson Machido. is, I, I'm going to tell you what, you never know with this guy. I mean, he's knocking people out. Um, I think he lost his la he lost his last fight, right? Okay, he fought Anderson Silva. Yeah, um, and that was close. I it mean, was. I, yeah. I'm I'm going to tell you what I gave that fight to to Brunson, but I think the UFC or the judges or something said, you know what, Anderson's lost so many in a row. We got to give him one. Hmm. You know, we got to give him one. You tell me and there's corruption in the MMA. Judges. No, no, of course there is. <laughs> um, but uh, Derek Brunson is no joke. I mean, he's. He, he's going to be a world champion, you know, and uh, I'll tell you what, Leota Machida is, uh, you know, it, this is, he's passing the torch right here because uh, it's a it's a big name for Brunson to go in, and um, I could see a, a fast, fast TKO what, or a knockout. Tommy, have you ever experienced what they call ring rust or cage rust? Nah. He's fighting every 15 minutes. He doesn't well, get I'm, that. I'm just, I want to know. Like, I'm, always back in the, I'm always back at the gym the next day <laughs> some, after a fight. You know, some fighters say it is a thing. Some say it isn't. And Loyota Machida, he's a former champion, but we haven't seen him in the octagon in a while. I'm just wondering. You know, he's fighting in, in, in Brazil in his, in his home country in front of tens of thousands of people. Uh, you know, what do you I, think? I, I think the whole ring rust could be mental a mental issue. Um I hasn't. I haven't physically experienced it, and not going. On, hopefully, I don't for a very long time. But I think his biggest thing should be, you know, uh, where his mindset is in this fight, and then after that, you know, maybe we'll get a good Leota Machida, like the old Leota Machida. Yeah. What I, the only thing that he has on his side is that it's in Brazil. That's it. That's you it. Think so? the, you don't think so? You don't think he's got the? I haven't seen. I haven't seen the lines, but I'll I'll guarantee Leota's a, an underdog in the fight. Pull him up, Terry. Let's see what the, <laughs> the line. Is. No, I'm only kidding. Let's see what the line is. You want to make um, some make some money on it. Yes. 
Money's but Brunson's good. no joke. I mean, oh, this kid yeah. is no joke, and he's young. Um, he's, I'm telling you, that, so you that's going to be a fast fight. So you're going, you're going out to, uh, to Penn State for the Belter card. Are you going to make the quick turn around back east and head out to MSG the next yeah, day? Yeah, um, well, I have so many things going on uh, that week with uh, MSG and Bellator. Uh, we got some signings going on with uh, the ring girls, actually, Ariani and Brittany. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, we always do things with Johanna when she's in town. So um, I'll be out there earlier in the week, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, shoot out to um, Penn State, my alumni, you know, on uh, Friday to see uh, to see an awesome night of fights. And uh, thank you, Matt Aptaker, uh, for the awesome tickets. You know, uh, yep. part of our sponsorship with the Lima, um, you know, we get to fight more memorabilia, of course, and, you know, Alima's amazing. I don't know if you've ever seen her fight. Um, you know, she's an amazing girl from Hawaii. From yeah, Hawaii. I, actually, I read like I read a little bit about her story. It wasn't she like just she went into an MMA gym just to lose some weight, yeah. and then all of a sudden yeah. she's yeah. like fighting for the championship belt. And yeah, and, and she's awesome. She's an awesome girl. And literally, I'm I'm gonna uh, talk to Matt. And we'll have her call in uh, to the show. Um, but uh, it's gonna be a great night of fights. I mean, we got you know Bader defending his title. Uh, we got Phil Davis, Penn State alumni, Ed Ruth. Yeah. You know, this this is a stacked card. But at the end of the day, it's it's at the Bryce Jordan Center in State College, you know. Um, you know, I don't know how much this is going to draw, you know. Um, I think, I think you know, even with it being at a new venue like that, like they've, they've never done it. At, right. They've never had a Bellator there. Um, they've never had a UFC there. But I think it's going to do fairly well because – You've got the university there. I think they're going to give a lot of yeah. tickets. I don't know what the ticket sales are, but I would imagine they're going to give out a lot of tickets to students. Yeah, they're going to fill, pack the place. Yeah. I, as a college student, and uh, when I was out there, you know, when you have a decision between uh, buying a ticket for an event or or beer, you know, it, it goes to the beer. You know, so I don't know if they're going to pay for them or give them away or what they're going to do. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of college students out there. I, I think there will be. Yeah. I think I think there will be. But uh, yeah, it's a great great card. A lot of a lot of uh, local talent on the on the card. Yeah. Um, what else is going well, on? I'll tell you what's going on. Let's talk about uh, USKA. What an awesome 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 venue that was. Yeah, you, you, you know? must have missed the intro where I. No, I, <laughs> I know we did talk about it, but we didn't talk about Rammy. We didn't talk about. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We talked about yeah, 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 a little but bit. That, yeah, that fight was awesome. That was that yeah. was one of the best fights. I've we seen. had a, a a guy from Masonette's uh, gym on that card. Yep. You know, and I'll tell you what, every, there was not a boring fight on that card. I I went to get a a, a white Russian. They were making fun of me because I drink these girlies. I don't drink. I'm not a drinker. You been, I have a beer here at the, the studio. It's a red wicked. Apple I have an apple juice. Ale. I have an apple juice, Tommy. You know, at the at the uh, at here. And then when we were out there, I had a white Russian. So I missed a fight, and I guess there was like a, a disqualification for a takedown or a yeah, multiple so, takedown. So it's the Muay Thai card, right? Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah. Actually, I saw first, that. It's yeah. the first round, and the guy tried taking his opponent down like three times. And, and referee Keith Pearson says the guy like spit out his mouthpiece and said, I'm done after he warned him. Like, <laughs> just, I'm yeah. done. So wow. they, just, they called the fight off. It was a disqualification. Yeah. But uh, – yeah, it was. How about this dude, Jesse, out of Scranton MMA? Jesse Burke, yes. Man. That kid put on a boxing clinic. You are not kidding. And he's been up up to our gym before. And uh, you, you've probably seen him before, Jesse Burke. He's got a a, a Scranton MMA tattoo right yeah, here. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I yeah. saw the kid. He TKO'd him or something. He is yeah. no joke. He kept his hands down. and I, I mean, he may have thrown five kicks the whole match. I mean, he just... Ripped him apart just I boxing. Him in the head. Yeah, I kicked him in the head. Yeah, he kept him down, and he was what a and and what a nice kid, and you know uh, Steve Wilson out of Scranton MMA, great guy, and uh, I wish them the best of luck, you know. Yeah, the uh, another fight that I really enjoyed, uh, this kid Cole Fetzner from Canada took a fight on yeah. like less than a week's notice. Yeah. Uh, the, the Lewis Rumsey backed out of the fight against uh, Nate Kennard, and this kid Cole steps in and put on a great fight. And then he gets on the microphone, and he made Jen, the matchmaker, he made her job easy. He basically said, he said, uh, you know, next fight is for the, the, the fight following me is going to be for the, the title. And uh, I want I want them, to, you know, they're babysitting my belt. 
Yeah. So yeah, you know, set it up. All Jen has to do is plug him in now, and yeah. he's gonna he could fight Davis, who's the champion, defend his belt that night. That'd, that'd be a great fight. Yeah. yeah um, definitely. That was it was good nights of fights, and and uh, you know, uh, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Irv. Thank you, Eric, for uh, letting me come and hang out with you guys. Uh, I mean, we're right at the cage. It's been like it this month awesome. has been right. like this month and last month has been packed with fights, right? Back yeah, to back. There's a lot of fights. Yeah. A lot of going on. Yeah. And we got, uh, you know, uh, Maverick MMA. Their next fight is December 9th. You know, yeah. so it's my, yeah, damn, my buddy's damn. fighting on that. Yeah, Kevin's yeah. fighting on it. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Nice. Art of War. Um, we got UFC, Bellator. Who else? Glory. 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 Submission tournaments coming up. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Aggressive combat championships. You're holding in a card. Yeah. Uh, looking to uh, do a card on November 11th. Yeah. Uh, amateur boxing match. Uh, Right here in town, uh, Strasburg, Pennsylvania. So we're still working on out the details on that. But yeah. So, uh, like we said, next week Brett Martinez will call in, and uh, that'll, that'll, you know, we'll talk to him about his fight. He's going to be cutting weight, and he's going to be fighting that night, or uh, that that Friday night for Bellator. Uh, but other than that, we're about out of time. It's uh, you know, it's ten o'clock. So oh boy. Yeah, time flies Too by. Too much fun. Yeah. Tom, Guys. Tommy's in the studio. Thanks for yeah. thanks for coming in. Tommy Espinosa going to be fighting King of the Cage. This coming weekend, and then uh, he's going to be fighting for Glory in December. And uh, yeah, we'll thanks for everybody who, who's listening, everybody who's watching live on Facebook. Uh, you know, and next week is going to be another great show. Tommy, thanks for coming in. Best of luck this thanks week. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, all right, and then uh, that'll do it for us. And uh, as we exit, we're just going to listen to a quick commercial from our sponsor, Combo Hitter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, the undisputed, indestructible combo hitter! The newest innovation in punching technology, the combo hitter. It's safe for all ages and physical conditions, easy to install, adjustable, reduces trauma. The combo hitter is your perfect punching partner. Official sponsor, FightTVPlus.com. Wrong one.